Bengal Genius here as we are days away from free agency and things are moving and shaking, especially in the AFC where it's getting crazy. Chargers traded for Khalil Mack, so now you're going to have to deal with Bosa, Khalil Mack. The Chargers I look at as our number one contender to, to battle with uh, next year in the playoffs. I look at Chargers number one and Buffalo number two, then the Chiefs. But as always, the AFC North will be tough because that's just how the AFC North rolls. But then Cleveland Browns got Amari Cooper today. They still got Baker Mayfield. I can't really, we can't trash Baker Mayfield too much as Bengal fans since we haven't beaten the guy yet. But I expect, I expect to. I think that's just a fluky little thing there, clearly. So, but, so they're still going to have Baker. But the Cleveland Browns got a little bit better there. And as well, there was another big move. Of course, Russell Wilson joined the AFC. So now the AFC West, they're going to have dog fights with them quarterbacks going at it, each other. Someone asked the other day to rank them all, and I'd have to go with, for that division, I'm going to go with number one's Mahomes, number two, Wilson, number three, Herbert, and number four, Derek Carr. Derek Carr is pretty good. He just, you know, he's going to have to deal with them. Can't win the playoff blues, which they can drive you crazy because, Really, that's all people will talk about you until you get to the playoffs. That's it. Can he win a playoff game? Can he win a playoff game? It's so obnoxious. It makes the whole season. It's like the Packers are facing that now. Well, can Aaron Rodgers get back to the Super Bowl? So that's just a tough road to be on, you know, especially for like the Packers when they've already done it. But regardless, another quarterback in the AFC. Now, Deshaun Watson, they're, the grand jury decided to not charge him. With the whole, that whole case is bizarre anyway. Um, The way I look at it, if he's not charged criminally, you know, it's a lot of he said, she said. Talking about a lot of masseuses there, but there's quite a bit of smoke. I don't even know, but who knows what's going on there. Any, However it shakes out, though, I just hope that Foster ends up in the NFC because the last thing we need is another beast quarterback in the AFC. But as we know, the free agency period's kicking up. And the rumors are, the one that seems to be the most consistent I hear is Jensen going, the center from Tampa Bay, going to Cincinnati. I don't know how everyone's so confident in that. Hey, I'm all for it, though. Guy is a beast. You know, the uh, Coach Pollock says he wants some glass eaters instead of these candy glass eaters, a bunch of candy glasses. But so they want to get tougher, man. And Jensen's definitely, I like them guys that put the business on dudes after the tackle, after they flatten them, then they put the little nudge on them. So, and he's definitely that kind of guy. It would be a definite upgrade over Hopkins. I still like Hopkins, maybe a guard, good depth. I think he's a great, great team guy, but we just need, like I said, we need to get vicious out there. And I'm so I'm very anxious for a free agency period to start to see if the Bengals are going to do things as they always have done, which has been a little bit, you know, actually Jeff Hobson was talking about that, and they like to keep about $10 million under the cap uh, just to sign their own rookies and uh, sign their rookie class and for whatever things may come up. So they're still expected to cut Trey Wayne, still expected to cut uh, maybe Trey Hopkins, so they should have some money to work with. But they have got to, as we all know, I'm beating the drum and I'm not going to stop. They have to upgrade the offensive line. So when it comes to free agency, fans are like kids at uh, Toys R Us. You know, they want to buy the whole place. And the GM of the team, they have to be a little more like the responsible parents. And it's not just a matter of spending the most money. The most money doesn't win free agency. The smart money does. Reader is was a phenomenal free agent. Hendrickson was a phenomenal free agent pickup. Hilton was great. You know, the whole free agency class, you know, Trey Wayne just didn't work out. If anything, he should sign for the veteran minimum just to pay us back something for that. But so it's going to, I'm just excited. I just, you know, I keep, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm flirting with them uh, season tickets. I told the guy, I told the ticket guy, I go, you know what? Let's wait. I want to see if you guys actually upgrade the offensive line. I want two premier free agents out there. So no clowning around, man. Let's get this thing done, and it's going to be something else. So it's going to be so hard. I was looking at it again, you know, um, how difficult it is. I was actually thinking back. I actually did some research on this. I was watching the uh, Falcons 
New England, you know, they they had that Super Bowl win, 28 to three, and then of course we all know the rest. Brady brought them back for the most amazing comeback in Super Bowl history, and you know, Falcons never sniffed it again. The mindset. Joe Burrow's a stone cold killer, and that killer mindset is the what separates him from a guy like Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan kind of seems like a you know kind of the guy that wears the, the the alligator on the shirt, kind of sandals, kind of guy. He's just not a tough guy. That's all. A lot different than Joe Burrow. So I expect I expect Burrow to get it done. And then I look back to the a team that lost the Super Bowl. Then went back and won it the next year. The Dolphins did that in 72. They bounced back out of that perfect season. And, of course, Tom Brady, after they lost the Super Bowl, they bounced back and won it the next season. So it has happened. It's very difficult. But, hey, we got the right team for it, right, baby? So we're getting closer and closer. There was also talk of us trading for a tackle um, from Dallas. He's owed about $15 million for this year, but, you know, I don't know how you could weasel that, manipulate the stock, um, the the, uh, the cap a little bit. I'm all for it. Bring in there, especially uh, Frank, Coach Frank Pollock, the offensive line coach, work with him in Dallas. So that familiarity, give him what he wants. He's a young guy. And that's the thing I look for, you know, for the Bengals. That they've been signing. They don't really spend the big money for the extended year deals on older guys. But the more the merrier. I hope they do sign some one-year deals. I hope they get these guys, these young guys on you know three, four-year deals. And let's go, baby. So the clock is ticking. We are almost there for the Super Bowl push. The new, the new league year starts on Wednesday. And that's it. The Bengals are going to be on their way. Super Bowl bound. Let's go to the Super Bowl. So I am going to wrap it up. And I also, hey, check this out. Listen to this. Okay, it's going to kick in right now. Yeah, so this is my sound engineer, Zach Hills. I hired him out doing this duet with my boy TJ Hushmanzada. Take a listen. This is my new sign-out song. So thank you for that, Mr. Hills. And, of course, Hushmanzada, my boy. So, All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the Bengal Genius Show. We're out. Who day?